Welcome to Surviving Mars. My name is Thomas. This series will focus on the five tutorials presented in front of you. We have the basics, exploration, maintenance, colonist, and domes. I'll consider a complete playthrough of Surviving Mars if it gains popularity. This channel is focused on blind playthroughs, so my rules are pretty simple. There's no backseating, tips, or spoilers. So, Let's remain respectful of the player, which is me, and the viewers, which is you. This will be my first game in the colony sim and city builder genre, hence many mistakes will be made, so don't blame yourself if you get frustrated, as that's part of the fun. My approach to learning something new, like a video game, is slow and methodical. This means the pace is set slower. In return, I'm hoping I can understand the mechanics quicker. If you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. I'm currently playing Subnautica for the first time. I've also completed a blind playthrough of Dyson Sphere program, Factorio, and Satisfactory. If that interests you, those playthroughs can be found on my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's get started with today's episode. All right, everybody. I'm going to start with the basics. In this tutorial, you will learn how to navigate Mars, how to land a rocket, manage drones, and construct building on Mars. All right, everybody, that sounds like a lot of fun. You all know how much I love space games, and this sounds exciting. So let's go ahead and get started with the basics. Welcome to Mars. All right, everybody. Welcome to Mars. In this training exercise, you will learn how to gather basic resources from the Martian surface, how to construct a small base, and how to refuel the rocket in order to send it back to Earth. Let's get started. Effect. Achievements are disabled during all tutorials. All right, everybody. Let's get started. Hints, such as this one, will appear throughout the training process, giving useful information on how to advance in your current tasks. All right. Please dismiss the hint to continue. All right. You need to master the camera controls and familiarize yourself with the terrain around the prospective colony site. Excellent. I already like the setup of the tutorial. You get a voiceover. You get um, images with text and it's interactive. I'm, I'm really liking this already, guys. So let's continue with OK. All right. So, wow, what an interesting setup we have here, everybody. This is really a weird mechanic here already. And I don't know what to think about this. It's like a tabletop and it's like I got to place or click something. Uh, this is all very, very interesting. Uh, and what do we have here? This is sector F3, buildable area, 94%, one concrete, eight metals. Okay, interesting. You know, I don't know what to make of all of that, but uh, it says zoom in by uh, it says zoom in using the middle mouse on the explored sector to examine the surface of Mars more closely. All right, so I assume this is the explored sector only because it's not uh, highlighted in this white here. OK, so let's zoom in. Oh, wow, everybody, I just zoomed in. Oh, this is wild. <laughs> Okay, so we can use the WASD keys. Now it's time keys. to land your first rocket. Okay. All right. Excellent. So we just moved the camera around with WASD. Now it's time to land your first rocket. Proceed by selecting the pinned icon representing the rocket that is currently in orbit around Mars. Goal. Land the rocket on Mars. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Before I do it, you know, let's test the cameras a bit more here or the the camera singular. And here we are. We're testing the cameras. 
This is really nice. WASD. We can zoom in with the middle mouse button. Oh, that's really wonderful. That works pretty well, everybody. And we can zoom out. And here we are. Okay. Interesting view. Interesting view. I don't know what to make of it. But it appears that we have a very large area to build in, which is nice. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and land rocket number one. And as you can say, as it says here, ready to land payload, one drone hub, one moisture evaporator, one sterling generator, one fuel refinery, eight drones, five, ten, and five of, you know, whatever those items are. All right, everybody, so left click to land rocket. With the rocket selected, designate a landing site on the indicated location. Okay, so let's just match the hologram here, and we're going to do a left mouse, as it says, with the rocket selected. Use the mouse to move the rocket into position. All right, let's do it, everybody. And here we go. Wow, look at this. This is amazing. And here we have it, everybody. We are landing a rocket on Mars for the very first time. Check it out, everybody. And what's coming out of this? <laughs> and we have touchdown. The rocket has landed on Mars. Wow, everybody, I did it. I landed my first rocket in surviving Mars for the very first time. Okay, it carries drones, remotely controlled robots, which constitute your construction and resources gathering workforce uh, okay everybody so these robots are going to be gathering resources and it appears by looking at the image that they are grabbing whatever this is and storing it here okay interesting gathering basic resources for building construction is one of the first things on our main martian base place metal deposits so that the drones can begin automatically bringing the metals from the scattered surface deposits nearby. Gather five metals in a metal depot. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and do that and take a look at these cute little drones that are going to be my servants on Surviving Mars. We better give them a task. Otherwise, you know, Mission Control will get upset with me. Okay, everybody. So what does it say here? It says... Open the build menu using the right mouse button, then follow the arrows to choose the metal depot. Okay, so right mouse button. Ooh, that's interesting. Interesting. And uh, so look at this, everybody. We get this wonderful build menu right down here. That's pretty nice. And the arrow is saying storage. Okay, let's go with storage. We go to storage and then depots all right everybody and then metal depots and in the description it says it stores up to 180 metals sub resources will be transported to other depots within drone range okay everybody our drones have range interesting okay we'll we'll figure out that mechanic soon enough i bet and here we are, we have a depot, everybody, and look at this. It appears that we have a hexagon grid. You know, this is the first time experiencing a grid like this. So this is very interesting mechanic, and we're bound to this grid here. We can't just simply place it in between the hexagon grids. You know, we got to snap it to the, pre uh, the pre de predetermined grid, excuse me. And so it appears that we need to get these metals here, everybody, these little asteroids. So, you know, let's put it nearby uh, like that. Wow, everybody, I placed it down and take a look at this. The drones are automatically going to gather these resources. And let's just take a look at the animation, everybody. Let's appreciate this. And wow, look at this, everybody. We can really zoom up on this. All right, that's pretty dope, everybody. And look at that. They're putting it in the back of their little cart here. And wow, look at this. They carry it above their heads. 
and wow, they actually Our stack it on the platform. carries valuable resources that will be essential for the construction and maintenance of the colony. Initially, it's best to designate a universal depot so the drones have a place to store them. All right, everybody. I suppose we should listen to our advisor and place a universal depot. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, before we do that, everybody, um, I did see an arrow down here. And what's this all about? Pause the game. Ah, uh, okay, everybody. This is like Stellaris. All right, everybody. I played a blind playthrough oh, play th or a blind playthrough of Stellaris a few months ago, and it did have a pause button. And this game is made by Paradox, and uh, so is Stellaris. So you know, there's a similarity already between these two games. You know, there's a pause. There's a normal. There's a uh, three times normal, and then five times normal. Okay, everybody, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And then we have Soul 1. So that's our, our clock here. Okay, everybody. That's interesting. Cool. All right. So let's, um, you know, we can keep the game pause here. Let's hit the right mouse button. And I'm going to click the Universal Depot. And it says here it stores 30 units of each transportable resource. Some resources will be transported to other depots within drone range. Okay. So, you know, let's, um, let's be organized and just kind of put these next to each other. All right. Yeah. And a nice little line like that. And here Along we go. Along with metals, concrete is the other vital basic construction resource. Wow, everybody, we need to get concrete. The concrete extractor building must be placed over or within proximity of a concrete deposit. Goal. From the build menu, select the build a concrete extractor and place it at the proposed location. Okay, everybody, let's observe what we see in this image. So look, everybody, you can see they have a universal storage over here and they got metal over here, kind of like what we have set up. And not only that, they have what looks like, I believe the concrete extractor and take a look at this. It pushes the little miner way out there to extract the concrete. How interesting. I really like it. And then they placed another depot. Looks like a looks like a concrete depot right next to it. So that's interesting. So I think we should copy what we see here. And you know, I don't know what this is all over here. That's interesting. This looks like maybe a power line pole. You know, what's this? I don't know. Let's hit OK. All right, let's hit the play button here and allow our drones to keep mining the metals. And then I'm going to hit the right mouse button and I'm going to click over here and I'm going to click the concrete extractor. And everybody, here we are, extracts sulfurous rich regolith from concrete deposits and produces concrete. All extractor raise dust, resulting in more frequent maintenance for buildings. All right, everybody, isn't it amazing if you just read the description, what you can find in there? So we, now we know that uh, a dust and maintenance mechanics exist in surviving Mars. So let's be mindful as we don't want to incur too much maintenance. All right, so let's go ahead and do this and take a look at that, everybody. It says it consumes five power. And the maintenance is one which appears like uh, a gear. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the concrete extractor. And here we are. And take a look at this, everybody. We have a panel on the right side where it says the construction cost. So five metals and two. OK, there it is. Machine parts, everybody. So two machine parts. Power is five status available resources oh everybody take a look at that there's a grade and this grade is high so this is kind of like satisfactory and yes i did do a playthrough of satisfactory and in satisfactory there are different grades of resources so there is uh like there's normal there's high and then there's low and uh, so this appears to be the same way here. This is a high grade. 
So that's great. So we're going to be a bit more efficient, I think, and extract more. All right. And then it says place it with the left mouse button, right click the mouse button to cancel. Press R and T to rotate and then the middle mouse button to zoom in and out. And hold shift to place multiples and hold control to show effect range. Okay, let's see the effect range. Well, everybody, take a look at this. All right, everybody. So what is the effect range? Is that... Is this like the... What is... What's the effect range? Why does this matter? That's my question. Why do we have this range? Well, I'm thinking if we read the top description here, all extractors raise dust, resulting in more frequent maintenance for buildings in the gray area. Okay, everybody. There it is. So I think my assumption is that the radius here is the, the the dust here okay so this is the radius for the dust and if it's overlapping the radius of the rocket you know over time that's going to deteriorate the rocket because of the dust and um so more maintenance more resources and you know not not so good so i think that's what it means we'll see if i'm right or wrong everybody so i'm going to hit r to rotate this and match it up with the hologram presented in front of me. And right away, I'm pre presented with a um, no cable connection. So it appears that we're gonna be working on power. Well done. Now observe how the drones will carry all the resources to the site and then construct the concrete extractor. All right, remember the construction will finish more quick quickly on the fastest game speed. Okay, everybody, we understand that we're in no rush. All right, I'm going to press X and, you know, look at all of this up here, everybody. There's just so much going on on the top menu, uh, even in the bottom right and left. You know, there's a lot of things going on. We'll we'll go over each one of those things as we proceed through these tutorials. So here we are, everybody. We place down the Concurry extractor and take a look at this. What are they bringing? So... Oh, they're going to grab some metals, everybody. So they are going to grab the metals and take a look at this. What do we have here? Ah, a universal depot. Yeah, I did play this, this down. And what is it grabbing? Okay, everybody is grabbing polymers, machine parts, electronics, and metals. All right. All right. And I think... Yeah, everybody, I think that came from my ship, all right? So they must have offloaded those uh, components from the rocket onto the Universal Depot, okay? How wonderful. And look at this. They're prioritizing the metals out here instead of the depots over here. So that's, that's, a, that's a nice little touch. And take a look at this, everybody. It appears that this is building... Um, it seems like it's kind of stuck here. All right, well, let's speed this up by hitting the fast button. And everybody, did you see that? This game has a day and night cycle. That's wonderful. And take a look at the drones. They are building. Like most buildings, the concrete extractor needs power in order to operate. Having a reliable electrical grid and supply is essential for the success of the colony. All right, everybody, the concrete extractor is completed and sterling generators are an excellent power source, but they are too complex to be built on Mars during the early stages of our colonization efforts. This is why we ship them from Earth partially assembled in prefabs. Prefabs do not require any resources, only drones to unpack and assemble them. Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, we placed you with a sterling generator prefab. A goal, construct a sterling generator and then connect it to the concrete extractor with a power cable or place a sterling generator adjacent to the concrete extractor for direct connection. Well, everybody, 
I don't think we really want to use the Sterling generator to connect it to the concrete extractor adjacent because this thing kicks up dust. And if this Sterling generator is in the range of the dust coming from the extractor, that's going to want to recruit maintenance. Now, what does it take to maintain something? I don't know. I hopefully we'll figure out in today's episode. All right, and take a look at this image. You can see that they have the Sterling generator, which I think is this thing here, pretty far away from the concrete extractor. So, you know, let's uh, repeat what they have here. All right, let's place a Sterling generator prefab by selecting it in the build menu. All right, everybody, let's use the build menu and we have the map, we have the build menu and we could press B as a shortcut key. So I'm going to hit B and then we're presented with more here. And then what do we got? Power. And then look at this, everybody, a Sterling generator, which is going to give me 10 power. All right. Very nice. I'm going to click this and, you know, again, let's hold control and make sure this is out of the dust. Okay. Look at this. And apparently the rocket kicks up dust. Well, that makes sense. It has boosters on it. And when it lands, it takes off. It probably kicks up dust. So, you know, I think this looks pretty good. It's outside of both the radiuses here. So let's place the generator. Okay. And it appears the drones are going to go ahead and grab the required materials. Connect the Sterling generator and the concrete extractor using a power cable from the build menu to power up the extractor. Okay, everybody. So this was a prefab given to me. So I don't think it cost me anything. Okay. Um, and now we need to connect the Sterling generator to the concrete extractor. And I love these icons. Very nice touch. I understand what's going on and take a look at this, everybody. They are going out on the map and collecting more metals. This is so cool. I like how they show the actual metal being piled up on the storage area. Very nice. I like it. I like it. And you know, the music is really nice. Uh, the UI and art is really nice. And look, everybody, we're heading into the nighttime. So let's power this up. And how much power does this take? Okay, five power, and then this takes, this generates 10. Okay, so we have plenty here. I'm gonna right click, and here we are. Connect power producers and consumers by establishing power grids. Cost one metal for each five hexes, long sections. Oh, okay, so like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, everybody, and do we have a connection point here? How do we connect this? Do we just do in like an adjacent? Oh, everybody, everybody, I'm holding the left mouse button. And as you can see, we can kind of turn this. Okay, I really like this mechanic, everybody. I I, I like the UI here. I, I think, you know, I played games that have power pulls, you know, like Satisfactory. Factorio, the Dyson Sphere program, they use power poles to transport the power. But here in Surviving Mars, they use these cables, which I think is really nice. I like it. I really like it. It's a different way of doing it, and I really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and release the left mouse button. Oh. And so we still have it selected. So I think I need to press the mouse button, the left mouse button once more again. Okay. And how do I clear this? How do I clear the cursor? Is it Q? Nope. Is it escape? Ah, yes. All right, everybody. Waste rock is a byproduct of all extractors and is best stored at designated locations. This way you can ensure that it will not be in the way of future construction. 
All right, everybody, that's good to hear. We need to find a way to get rid of the byproduct here or the waste. The amount of waste rocks per resource extract extracted depends on the grade of the resource deposit. Okay, well, we know our grade is high, so we, we're going to probably need, a, you know, enough to get rid of the waste product here. You can select a resource deposit to view its grade and the amount of resource remaining in it. Goal. Place a dumping site in a concrete depot to store the extracted concrete. Okay, everybody. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that and take a look at that, everybody. Look at the power. That looks so cool. I love it. I love it. And let's appreciate the animation of the concrete. Look at this, everybody. Look at it go. Lick up all of the regolith and turn it into concrete. And stored waste rock. Almost 1 out of 10. Stored concrete. 1.1 out of 20. Production per soul, 24. All right, everybody. All right, let's go ahead and get a depot for this. And we'll say, you know, concrete... How about, you know, right here, everybody? Really nice. And so now we need to find a dumping site and we have a large one and a, just a, a regular standard size one, uh, not yet available. Stores up to 105 waste rock is produced in as side product of different mining activities. Oh. Interesting. So apparently we're going to be using this for something else. I like that, everybody. That's a nice mechanic. Drones will pick pending tasks on their own within the range of the drone controllers they are assigned to. Oh, everybody. Look, drones and drone hubs. Currently, all drones are assigned to the rocket. When the rocket is selected, the work range of all drones assigned to it will be visualized. If the rocket takes off, however, all the drones will need another controller. Goal. Build a drone hub and make sure it's supplied with power. Alright everybody, so let's take a look at this. So what do we have? The surface, the surface area determines the radius in which the drones harvest resources or construct service and clean buildings. Well, there you have it, everybody. Ah, ah, okay, so this is what this is for. Okay, and then what we have, uh, drones eight, priority or drone load low. All right, everybody. So our status of our rocket is refueling. Okay, gathering exports. Interesting. So we, we there's exports. Departing tourist. Oh my goodness, everybody. <laughs> All right. And take a look at this. We can rename the rocket. All right. You know, let's just leave it, everybody. Very nice. And, you know, let's go ahead and construct a drone hub. All right. All right. This takes three power, so we definitely have enough power. So I'm going to left click and let's zoom out. No cable connected. No problem. We, we can fix that, everybody. Um, so... Let's place the drone hub here. Or, you know, how picky do I want to be? You know, we could place it here, everybody. Why not? Well, let's see if it's in the range of the dust. Let's keep it out of the range of the dust, everybody. So, you know, let's place it here. Okay, there it is. The drone hub. All right, so let's go ahead and connect the power. And power cables. And then we'll left click. 
And, you know, let's bring it up. You know, something like this, everybody. Okay, and then can I just do a right click and a right click? All right, everybody. And there we have it. We're going to be powering up our drone hub. And it is a really, really busy little factory we have Drones going on here. Drones run on batteries that have to be recharged periodically. Every drone hub has two recharge stations built in, but you might need additional ones as the colony spreads out. Constructing recharge stations, especially long areas with heavy drone activity, will prove vital for maintaining an efficient workforce. Goal. Build a recharge station near the concrete extractor. Okay, everybody, I feel like they're not giving me a good advice. They're telling me to place the rechargeable station near the concrete, but that's going to accrue maintenance, everybody. So I don't want that to happen. Um, so, you know, how picky do I want to be with this? We could listen to them. And I'm pressing R to rotate this. I mean, this is kind of cool. All right, everybody, let's just place it near the concrete. And, you know, we'll see what happens here. And here he goes, the drone. How beautiful. Maintaining a steady supply chain between Earth and Mars is essential, especially during the early colonization stages. Ooh. Look at this, everybody. Every rocket has enough fuel for one-way trip to Mars, and it has to be refueled on site, so it can return to Earth and be reused. Fuel is produced in a fuel refinery. To set up a production chain, we will also need water. Goal. Build a moisture evaporator and then f a fuel refinery. All right, everybody. Great. Uh, so, you know, let's go ahead and build a moisture evaporator. And I'm going to hit the B for build menu. I'm going to place this here. Produces water from the atmosphere. Production lowered when placed near other evaporators. No production during dust storms. Uh oh, everybody. There are dust storms. All right. That's a mechanic. And. Also, placing evaporators near other evaporators is a mechanic as they are not efficient. It's lowered if you place it near another one. So we got to be careful of that. All right, everybody, this consumes five power and two metals. So that means we're probably going to run out of power here because, you know, this guy here, a sterling generator, gives me ten. So we have five. 5.2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8.2 power. And so this is going to be 5. So, yeah, we're definitely going to exceed our power limit here. So, you know, let's see what happens here. And immediately I'm presented with what appears like four little pipeline connections to the evaporator. And we do have our radius here. So, you know, let's, you know, place it near the ship, I suppose. And, you know, I want to plant it right there. And take a look at the little drones. They're going to build the evaporator. Okay, so there's that. And so I'm going to do right click. And then I'm going to click down here. And what do we have here? We're presented with a fuel refinery and produces fuel from water. Look at that, everybody. There's the maintenance machine parts. Okay. Machine parts. Base production 12. All right. And so, you know, let's just. Do I just do something like this, everybody? You know, I don't know. Do it like that. Ooh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I do. Let's just place it here, everybody, and let's see what happens.
I'm just kind of following the photo that was presented to me. And immediately I can see that a power line is connected between the two. I think that's what that is. I could be wrong, but that's interesting. And so now it's time to bring some power to it. So I'm going to hit B and then I'm going to head over here and grab the power cable, which is C. And then, you know, let's go from here. Oh, it appears we cannot go around like that. Oh, no. So could we go around like this, everybody? We can just go around the depots. And like that. How about that, everybody? I think that's going to work. All right. And the little drones are building the power lines. We don't have sufficient power for all the buildings in the colony. All right, everybody, as I expected, we do not have enough power. Luckily, we have an extra sterling generator prefab we could use. Build a new sterling generator along the power network. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to press B and then look here. We have another prefab. All right. And look at the maintenance as this takes the purple stuff, whatever that's called. And, you know, let's be organized in make a little power facility over here with sterling generators. A system of pipes is used to deliver resources such as water and air where they are needed. Wow, everybody, check out the image above. Uh, and we see that there are some pipes connecting the two with the power lines running underneath the pipe system. So we know that we can stack these on top of each other. That's really nice. And the moisture evaporator has been connected with pipes to fuel the refinery. Can connect the moisture evaporator to the fuel refinery with pipes. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and do that. And uh, so life support and then pipes. And these cost one metal. And Take a look everybody we have a pipeline and i suppose we just connect them right right everybody so we just go like left click and how about we just you know left click here and then right mouse button and right mouse button and i think that looks connected everybody fuel production is now underway and the drones will begin to deliver the fuel to the rocket. Wow, everybody, I did it. I'm producing fuel for the very first time in surviving Mars. Wow, what an achievement. Use the speed controls to increase the game speed so the rocket refuels faster. Effect, for the purpose of this tutorial simulation, the rocket needs far less, five, than it would during the normal playthrough, 50. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, so everybody, take a look what is he doing? He's all flashing. Why is he flashing? Oh, everybody, take a look at this. The drone is recharging. It's recharging. Oh, that is super cool. Look at him. He's grabbing the outlet and he's charging. Now he's ready to go. Wow. What a champ. All right, everybody. It's time to, you know, let's do five times the normal speed. And here we go. Is this producing fuel for me? Production parcel 12. And, you know, here we have the rockets. And our status is 2 out of 5 fuel. Wow, everybody. We only need 3 more. And take a look at my drones. They're just Resources kind of chilling. They're just kind of chilling. You know, waiting for things to do, but there's no, nothing really to do here. We're just waiting to generate some fuel here. And how are we doing? We need one more fuel, and I think he has it right here, everybody. All right, everybody, let's uh, launch the rocket, but let's just put it on normal speed. All right, so we can enjoy the animation here. So here we go, everybody. Let's return to Earth. Initiate launch sequence for the return 
trip to Earth nuked, the rocket has to be fueled, and the remaining resource aboard will be lost. Oh. That's interesting. Okay, everybody. Let's keep that in mind. And check it out, everybody. The rocket is preparing to launch. Everybody, we're launching our rocket for the very first time. Congratulations. You have finished the first tutorial. Wow, everybody. They did not allow me to see the animation. How disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you learned how to set up a basic outpost on Mars that can gather resources for further expansion and fuel rockets. Using rockets to bring additional supplies from Earth is essential for a fledging colony, everybody. Okay, everybody, that's great. I made my first outpost and I was successful in refueling my rocket. And, you know, the thought of bringing colonists to Mars is frightening because I know that this is a colony sim and it does have survival mechanisms so you know it's a little bit distressing and hopefully I don't get anyone killed over here thankfully I was able to set up this little outpost thanks to the tutorial wow the tutorial surviving Mars is excellent I really really love it and so far everybody I'm really enjoying surviving Mars and I hope you enjoyed today's episode if you would like to continue to see the rest of the playthrough of the missions you know let me know in the comments hit that like button and if you would like to follow along uh, the best way you could do is by subscribing with that said, everybody, you guys all have a wonderful day there, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care. Bye.